I'm here tonight to talk about uh, CSS Grids, mostly about the W3C working draft version, uh, but also a little bit about existing uh, CSS Grid frameworks. And um, yeah, it's going to be some interesting stuff here. Uh, before I get into it, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Guillaume Hamadi. Please don't get creative with the pronunciation of my, of my first name. It's Guillaume. I'm pretty confident about how it works. Uh, I work at Envato, um, and I'm in like no uh, prefer preferable order. Uh, also, a photographer, sketch note uh, enthusiast, mountain biker, and uh, globe trotter. So, uh, what's on the menu today? We'll start with a bit of like what's behind the technicalities of it, history of the grids in visual design. Uh, then I'll take you through some existing CSS grid frameworks. Like there's a huge amount of it around but they all share some kind of basic mechanics uh, with some coding examples. And then I'll go through uh, the CSS, uh, W3C CSS working draft, the specification, some of the coolest bits of the syntax. It's by far not going to be extensive. This thing is massive, but I'll try to uh, share what I've enjoyed in this discovery process. There will also be some coding in that. So let's start with some history in uh, visual designs for, uh, in the use of grids in visual design. Uh, we should start with agreeing with some vocabulary. There's a few things which are not necessarily completely obvious. Some of them are, some of them maybe not. So let's agree together. These are vertical and horizontal lines. They will have an importance when we see how um, we decide where to put the content on a CSS grid. This is a cell. That's the smallest unit uh, resulting of the intersection of uh, horizontal and vertical track. I'll come to the track just later. Uh, an area can be uh, any combination of cells as long as it's a rectangle. A square is fine, but you could not have, for example, this one as an added part of this to still be an area. That doesn't work. And so these are a horizontal and a vertical track. Okay, so with that being put, uh, being cleared out, um, I don't know if any one of you guys have ever kind of enjoyed a little bit of photography, but if you've ever done anything else than uh, taking a selfie with this mobile phone in your hand, your pocket, or your bag, you might have heard about the rule of thirds. So what the rule of thirds tell you is that the default thinking when you start shooting at something with a, with a camera is that, oh, this is the most interesting part of my photo, I'll put it in the middle. Actually, no. Divide the, your frame, your viewfinder in three horizontal um, rows and three columns, and then try to put the elements of interest in one of the intersections, not in the middle. Um, and what's the, what the, the result of that is that you are going to end up with like a much more appealing image than if your topic is centered. In some cases, centering is important, that works. But in most cases, in doubt, don't. Try to respect that, and you'll see like, some interesting visual results. Why is that? Uh, it's pretty sophisticated, like there's a lot of like biology, sociology, or psychology that I'm not going to go through uh, today. But if you're curious, give it a go and you'll see. So what I can say and what relates to the rest of the reasons behind grids is that um, it helps with organizing the space, organizing your, the viewport in the case of like web, uh, web development, but just like whatever, if it's a page of a print result. It brings rhythm. It brings uh, empty space, which is actually really important. Like, don't want to shove more content in a page sometimes. Just remove, and that actually helps a lot with whatever was your original goal. So um, these rhythm management of empty space are really uh, helped by using a grid as the base of a design. So for example, in print, you can't read the text. It's cool. Me either. That's fine. You don't need it. But this is a two-paged uh, print, um, print grid. You can see it's like four rows and four columns. Uh, this one in particular is called a modular grid. Historically, grids in print come from um, the newspaper industry, which was purely column grids. Uh, modular grids also bring this rhythm and this organization to the, the rows, to the, uh, to the uh, horizontal rhythm. You can see that it can, it's not necessarily one cell. It's uh, like one image is on one cell, but there's another one is on three cells, like a horizontal track. Some blocks of text can be onto one, four, or six cells. But they respect the cell. 
they don't go over uh, a bit more, or they just keep respecting this. And that brings this kind of regular rhythm that unconsciously is going to help with readability, with uh, pleasure, with comfort for the user. So in web design, that's one of the millions of examples available online. This is just uh, taken from the homepage of uh, an, ad, uh, um, an advertisement agency in the Netherlands. And so what you can see on this design is that they have, so they don't, don't have like um, a definite amount of rows because you keep scrolling, there's more content, but they definitely have four columns and content spreads on one or two columns in this case. You can even have the, the navigation, there's like the title and the navigation elements each on uh, one particular cell. So, what's available on the existing CSS grid frameworks? What can we try to find out? I, I've never started a project and had to use a grid, but I've come to work with lots of projects. We already had the grid system in it. Uh, in no particular order, again, responsive grid system, the foundation, bootstrap, and there's, once again, there's in, not an infinity, but like an incredible amount of uh, available frameworks you can pick up from. In the case of like Zurb and Bootstrap, for example, they are much more fully fledged. They come with like way more stuff than just the grid. Uh, but in this particular case, I was just interested in the grid system. This screenshot is taken from Zurb Foundation, and it starts, uh, it gives you an idea of um, what's going to be the base elements for building your grid. Um, so small and large are um, a way to describe in your CSS selectors uh, how many rows you, you want to have in your design. And the number is actually, uh, um, the key idea is that your base design is 12 columns. That's not always the case, but that's maybe like 95% of the CSS root frameworks are based on 12 columns. It has a nice property, it's divide, you can divide it by three, by four, uh, by two, and, um, and that just makes um, combining various width of columns for your design uh, very nice. You just have to end up having on each row multiple, like uh, the total amount of columns has to be the, the default value of your CSS framework, in this case 12. So you can see like more detailed examples, like you could have six columns waiting two of the column unit of your framework. You can have different width uh, on one row, just you need to make it 12 in the end, if the default is 12 or anything else. I've seen, I've come like in the other um, things I found out like 24 or five, um, Whatever, if you want to build one with seven, good luck with that, but that will also work. Um, so why not using a table? So I've learned a lot just like half an hour, like 15 minutes ago. Uh, and the end result is that actually, even when you need table or data, you should not use a table. So anyway, um, in this particular case, it would really be using something with a s heavy semantic meaning, and you just use it for layout purposes. That's a well-known, very bad practice, so let's not do it. Uh, in the particular case of a table, and as we've seen uh, in the previous talk, like reflowing the content or changing the, the way the content uh, behaves whenever you hit responsive breakpoints is going to be a hell of a nightmare. So please don't. Uh, let's have a look at one example. If it loads. So this is, this is not using an actual uh, one of the CSS frameworks I was uh, talking about before, but that's the basic mechanics of it is what you would find in any of these grid frameworks. Uh, the key elements is going to make your columns float, in this case float left, and as when you start floating elements, you very quickly end up using a clear fix. Um, there's also just the, the um, changing the box sizing model for the sake of uh, not getting crazy when you start getting into the math behind uh, your column mechanics. But anyway, uh, let's crawl a bit and let's have a look. This particular grid, uh, you can show in the example, you've got uh, full width title and then two, four, and eight columns. Uh, what's behind that is the class. So the way you express in the class is going to show how much of your total viewport, how, which proportion of your total viewport you are going to cover. So one, uh, one and a half takes 50% and it keeps going. Uh, in the particular, like what I wanted to show with this example is um, this mostly works, but very quickly you start hitting uh, quite weird side effects. So if for example, I was taking on like the eight rows, 
uh, this original example was built for 1,200 pixels uh, breakpoint for the widest. I don't know if I'm actually going to reach this on the screen. Yeah, it works. So you can see at the bottom that you have like eight, nine columns, uh, eight nice columns, and if you uh, collapse the thing, it behaves nicely up to the way where it reaches the breakpoint to move to two rows of four columns. But if if you end up messing up with the design and see for whatever reason you actually need your breakpoint to be at 1,000 pixels, um, it's not going to behave very nicely. And what's actually going to happen is that you're going to have you're going to be um, on your way to redo the math and we have to uh, find out new hard-coded pixel values for your thing to behave correctly because if you collapse before jumping to four uh, columns what happens is that notice that how this guy disappear it's here not even left just like in the middle of the page what what, what, what do you want to do with that I don't know I don't want to touch that um, so what does the W3C have for us? What niceties can we use from the proper specification? Have a read, digest this, I'll have some water. So, when I did speak here before, um, a few months ago, I took a quote, I was talking about Flexbox, and I took a quote from the actual W3C website. I had a look at the W3C page about the grids, uh, their grid specification. If I wanted to get any kind of meaningful quotes, I would have needed three slides. So I want to kind of use, and actually it's got like some interesting um, information in it. So just a bit of guesswork. Uh, the CSS grid system is a uh, working draft. Who of the browser vendors has the strongest support? Safari with WebKit? Anyone thinks that they have the so most solid support? No? Um, Chrome with um, Blink? No? Firefox, Gecko? IE and Edge. Yeah, so that's Microsoft. Um, Microsoft has the, has the only uh, browser vendor to ship in production a browser which actually directly supports CSS grid syntax from the W3C. There's a few cave hits though. First, it's uh, an old um, syntax, an old uh, API, which, is, which has evolved quite a lot. Um, and second, the other guys, they actually have uh, a more up-to-date version um, available in their um, nightly builds or developer builds like uh, Chromium, like uh, the next example, I'll run it on Canary. Um, Firefox uh, nightly also has it, um, a more updated support. But anyway, these guys are the only ones to ship it in production. And I found out something quite interesting. Um, the reason why is because they are the guys who um, went to the W3C and said, hey, we have this nice idea about building a grid in a nicer way on the web. Here it is. Would you consider taking this into like, the wider specification? And they were like, yeah, why not? And why did they do that? My understanding, I'm not sure about that, but that's kind of a bit of guesswork, is that it comes from that guy. So that's from Windows 8. Um, the specification was uh, brought to the W3C from Microsoft around 2010 which matches the, the time when Microsoft was uh, starting to get that out. And they were also pushing hard for developers to, instead of using uh, the Win32 APIs when it came to like, the, the user interface bits, but to push into um, web technologies. Uh, that's at the same time they went to the W3C with this nice grid syntax. So I guess that's the reason behind this uh, specification. And actually, I think it's pretty solid. Like they should now kind of like get the newer one out, but that's pretty cool. Um, let's have some uh, examples. Uh, nope. So what do we have? Let's have a look at the web view first. So just a grid, a header, three columns, uh, and a footer. The markup is pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to re reload it to be sure that I'm actually hitting the good code. Yep. So you've got the header with the title, uh, a nav, main, and all just like really like normally organized content. The CSS for it um, is actually pretty cool. 
So you start by defining um, your rows and your columns. So basically, these two lines are similar. The only trick is that this nice little syntax is exactly what it means. That's exactly the same as the line before. Um, and so that just makes it like nice and readable. So f with that, I've defined a grid of three rows and three columns. And then the next thing I do is that for each of my blocks of content, I define the line on which the row starts and ends, and the, co the line on which the column starts and ends. We are not numbering the columns on the rows here. We are numbering the lines. So typically, a three um, rows or columns grid has up to four, because you are talking about the containing lines. But so you keep going, you fill out, you say, OK, this content goes there, this content goes there, spans around this uh, column number one to two on first row, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what you get. Um, that's, that's cool, that's great, but we can do more than that. Whoa, what is that? So what just happened here is um, uh, I've uncommented another section. So I've got another section called ads, for example. And what I've changed is just instead of having uh, three um, columns uh, of automatic sizing, um, I'm introducing some interesting new units related to the grid system. So basically, now I've got four columns. Uh, the first one is hard-coded to 50 pixel. The third one is auto, so auto just depends on the content, as we can see. So first colon hard-coded to 50 pixels width. Third colon is auto, so basically it's exactly the line of the content I have. And then I have free space. So what the, um, the grid algorithm does is take the whole free space and just um, divide it in a, in a fraction manner. So what I tell here is that the second col column should have twice as much of the remaining free space as the fourth one. And that's exactly what happens here. So as I didn't um, tell the header and the footer to, um, to take more than the original um, column uh, coverage, they stop at, column, uh, like at line four, which is the end of column three. And they don't try to get any of the space on the right. Um, so, what else can we do with that? A much nicer syntax, because that is all well and good, this grid row start and end, but that gets very quickly quite confusing. There's a nice solution, though. Oh. So, what happened here? You can see that I've commented out all the code which relates to uh, defining which lines things start and end. And I've introduced this new property called grid area. It's basically a label. For each CSS selector, you create a new label. In this case, I went easy. I just took like the exact CSS selector name or just a shorter version. I haven't tried that enough, but my understanding of the first failures I had is that you can't have uh, a name in the grid area which has like uh, a dash. Don't take my word for it, but uh, in a hurry, I solved it by just finding a simple name. And then, once you've put the labels on all the elements that you want to dispatch in your grid, you go, to, you go back to your grid template. You have the same template rows and template columns. But then you have this new property called grid template area. And you literally, like as in a kind of ASCII art fashion, you display in the CSS, this element goes into this place next to that content. And so here I have a first row of four um, boxes containing the header a second row having a nav, then the side content, then two mains. And if you want to check, that's exactly what happens. Nav, a side, and two columns for the main. And the third one is like footer on the three first ones and the ads on the fourth. And the grid algorithm just goes, OK, I'll do it. Uh, no problem. Very easy, very flexible, nice. Just that would be lovely if we had more support for that in the browsers. Uh, the last thing I can show. Well, there's two more things. Um, let's go quickly through that. So gutters card can be quite tricky to do um, with like the current CSS frameworks. They, they all give you a ways to do it, but that's one of the things which makes the, 
the collapsing, that value, the collapsing of columns at various responsive breakpoints is potentially tricky. They introduce some like side effects which are painful. Um, and it's just because we end up, like the base of the CSS grid frameworks is all about floating elements, which was not historically built for like building grids. And uh, negative margins, basically you push some padding on one side and then you have to pull on some other elements to get everything aligned. So that's nice, but that's full of problems. And what the grid, um, the W3C uh, spec tells you is that one line and you're done. <laughs> I love it. The last bit, and I will finish my examples and pretty much my presentation, is about responsiveness. Cool, nothing has changed. I think I've commented out in the commit, yeah. So it's very simple actually. The only thing you do is that you create your media query or media queries at whatever your breakpoint is. Um, if I can comment out. And from there, you just really redefine whatever you want it to look like in your new viewport. So in this case, uh, under 480 pixels wide, I just have one row and one column, and I use the template areas because seriously, it's so much more simple than the other syntax. And I just define, well, I want one column with everything. And what happens? I have one column with everything in the order that I've decided. So. That finishes the examples, and that's all I have for you today. Uh, a few more uh, lists, I will share that online, and then you can have a read, there's a lot of literature, but that's all I have for you, thanks. <laughs>